this week's video is a bit different than usual. It's my um, assignment for uni. So it's about ODL. It's quite interesting, not gonna lie. Just go watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I hope you're having a great day today. To start this off, let me introduce myself. My name is Nia Adriana Damia. You can call me Nia. I'm from group AS1211A. There's fireworks outside. I am currently studying Diploma in Industrial Hygiene and Safety Tech in Bukit Besi, Terengganu. In today's video, I'll be talking about ODL and its challenges. What is ODL? By definition, ODL stands for Online and Distance Learning. It is a method of learning remotely without the regular face-to-face -face interaction with our teachers. Being in this pandemic for nearly two whole years now, I am pretty certain the majority of the students in Malaysia are aware of what ODL is. Me, myself, have been through ODL since I was sitting for SPM. And might I say, having to go through a major examination while being in online class was quite challenging. Before I dive into what these challenges are, let's talk about what ODL is and how it can be conducted. Prior to being in this pandemic, I myself was not aware of all the tools that we could use to conduct online learning. But thanks to ODL, I now know that the technological advancements we have make education more accessible for anyone, anywhere, at any time. Aside from the usual chatting platforms that we would use to communicate with each other, like WhatsApp, or Telegram. Video conferencing softwares like Google Meet, WebEx, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and many, many more help create a virtual classroom where we are able to interact with our lecturers and our classmates. Although these virtual classrooms may feel a little bit awkward without having face-to-face -face interaction or hands-on learning, it may still aid some students who need proper guidance when it comes to taking in information. Aside that, with online and distance learning, Work submission also got a lot easier. Instructors are now able to use platforms like Google Classroom, or in our case, in UITM, UFuture, for work submissions or a platform to spread out information on our notes, on our video lectures, or just simple reminders on whether we have a class or not today. It makes things a lot easier because everything's just at the tip of your fingers. Plus, it saves paper. <laughs> Aside from that, like I mentioned before, online and distance learning is accessible to anyone, anywhere, at any time. This means that if you're somewhat occupied to be at home to attend a class, you are still able to attend said class while being on the move. Provided that you have a stable internet connection, of course. As an example, just last week, my family and I decided to go out for dinner. But I had forgotten that I had a tutorial class that night. So what did I do? I joined my tutorial class in the car with my phone. Of course, with everything, there are challenges. And one of the main challenges everyone faces during online and distance learning is having a stable internet connection. Unfortunately, not everyone has the capability to afford unlimited Wi-Fi to access their classes at all times, so some of them have to rely on mobile data. But mobile data may make the classes stuck or, well, buffer. But worry not, a simple reminder to your lecturers to record their meetings can be a big help to this issue. Another challenge is the lack of devices. Some families are not able to afford devices for every single member of their family. Some have to share with their siblings, maybe a family of five, sharing one phone, which can be tough if some of them have different classes running by simultaneously. However, there was an initiative to try to solve this problem. The government did try to provide some devices for low-income families in the B40 category. And lastly, the biggest problem that even I personally face are distractions. Being at home, you are vulnerable in your environment. Anything can and will distract you. Plus, having to attend to technology. That's the biggest distraction itself. You can get distracted with stuff online, you can get distracted with things to watch, games to play, even social media. And then sometimes your family might come in the room and interrupt you in the middle of a class. Your mom will call you out to help you with house chores, your brother maybe meets up with his homework. Which can then get very overwhelming because you are not able to focus on your classes with all these distractions around you. A great solution is to make up a schedule. By making a schedule, you are able to divide your time properly, having enough time for studying, some leisure time, and even some family time. Plus, you should communicate with your family to allow you to attend to your classes with no interruptions. 
Moving on, I will now be talking about my own experience as a student going through online distance learning. I have been going through ODL since March 18th, 2020 when lockdown for COVID started. At the time, I was an SPM student. Personally, I thought it was very hard. I prefer hands-on learning with face-to-face -face interactions with my teachers and my classmates. So going through ODL, it made me very anxious. It made me become a very closed-in person. I started to become more nervous when it comes to doing presentations, talks, or sometimes just normal interactions with people. Because talking to someone through a screen is not the same as talking to them in real life. Plus, sometimes the pressure of being around my family made things even worse. But Alhamdulillah, I'm happy that I made through it and I managed to get into university into this wonderful course, which I do not regret because I have really good hopes for what I will do in the future. I will continue to work hard to maintain my semangat so I can graduate in this diploma with excellent results. Last and finally not least, let's talk about this subject, UED 102. What I learned so far in UED 102 is my learning style. I learned that I am a versatile learner. There are three types of learning style the student can have. There's visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. I got lucky because my learning styles are balanced in all three fields. This may be due to the fact that I love making art, I'm very good with musical instruments, and I really like to make little craft things. You see that thing on the wall? All those earrings, I made them by hand. <laughs> I am also super duper excited to learn more things from this subject because it seems to be a very good subject to help university students cope with our studies. Before I end this video, I would just like to say that if you're having a bad day, it's okay. Because bad days are like rainy days and rainy days, they come to an end. After a rainy day, there is always sunshine, so whatever you're going through, it will eventually end, and you will be okay. And if you need help, do reach out. There's always someone out there to help you. You're never alone, and you're always loved. So stay strong. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great week ahead. Bye-bye. Yay! Good job on making through seven minutes of me rambling about online distance learning. I hope that was actually educational for you, and if you guys really like content like this, I can actually make this into a regular thing on YouTube. That sounds like a lot of effort, but it sounds- it, it is fun. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Hope you like that. See you next week. Goodbye!